We hear the word virus and right away we think illness, a cold, the flu. Hi everyone, I'm Professor Vanessa Ruiz and this is Catalyst, shaping the future. Now for most of us, cancer would be far worse than getting a cold or the flu. But picture this, using science to turn a killer virus into a life-saving weapon to fight cancer. Just imagine the doctor telling you you have a, a cancer for which there's no cure and the natural survival rate, the average survival rate is five years. That news was devastating for Andy Gordon. I started to feel some pains and I felt like I'd pulled a muscle or something in the chest. I'm a pretty active cyclist and thought, athletic injury, middle-aged guy overdoing it. He was fit, healthy, and active. His diagnosis? multiple myeloma, a cancer of the blood, a diagnosis both surprising and haunting for him. He says it'll take more tests to know for sure, but we think you have a form of blood cancer known as multiple myeloma. Do you know what that is? And I looked at him and I said, oh my God, my first wife died of multiple myeloma 12 years before. I've had the privilege of taking care of Andy, really going back to his diagnosis uh, almost 10 years ago now. Um, and his treatment was fairly standard at the time. He underwent what's called a stem cell transplant, where we give him a very high dose of chemotherapy. But because that chemotherapy would wipe out all of his bone marrow, immediately before we give him that chemotherapy, we collect stem cells from his bone marrow that can grow a new one. So it's kind of like burning the lawn to get rid of the weeds. We burnt the lawn, but we made sure before we collected seeds to grow a new lawn. What the stem cell transplant does for you is it puts you into complete remission. You, there's no detectable cancer in your body, but sort of emphasis on the word detectable, it is there somewhere, and at some point uh, it will recur. And I said, so Joe, when this comes back, and we know it will, what happens next? And he says, well, you're not going to have another transplant. And I kind of, whoa, what's that mean? And he says, well, transplants will be so yesterday by that point. Looking to his future, I'm very confident that we'll be able to use the newer approaches and the newer treatments that we're now engaged with. We also are developing all sorts of new molecules and new approaches where we can attack the disease from different ways. And even if we can't cure it, we can control it in the longer term. At the leading edge of the search for cures to myeloma is work going on here inside the Biodesign Institute at Arizona State University. Oncolytic virotherapy is the use of a live virus that is harmless for humans uh, by itself, but has the capacity to replicate in tumor tissues and affect and kill tumor tissues, but not hurt the host. Here's the big idea. Could a virus that is devastating to rabbits be tricked into becoming a potential lifesaver for humans? I wanted to study a virus that had an effect out there in the world but was basically harmless for people. So I ended up picking a rabbit virus that Australians used more than 70 years ago to try and kill feral European rabbits that had gone crazy in Australia. The name of that virus, Myxoma. The lethal dose it takes to kill 100% of the animals is a single infectious unit, which means that if you're a rabbit, as soon as any cell on any surface of, the, of your body is infected with this virus, you die with 99.9% .9 certainty within two weeks after the infection. You can think of it as the zombie apocalypse for rabbits, but it's harmless for mice, humans, and every other vertebrate organism we know about. But one of the things we stumbled upon is that the virus can sometimes replicate in certain human cancer cells. In other words, the cancer cells had lost their ability to defend themselves against this kind of virus. So this kind of got us into the question, can we use the virus as a live drug to treat recipients that have got cancer if the virus is harmless for the host, but dangerous for the actual cancer tissue? When we first realized that this virus would grow very well in human cancer cells, we were not a cancer lab at the time, and we went looking for collaborators to help us test whether or not we could use this virus to actually treat and cure cancers in a, in a test animal host that has cancer. McFadden connected with a researcher who was working with the brain tissue of mice. 
He said, why don't you give me some of your magic virus and we will inject it into mice implanted with human glioblastoma, which is one of the really horrible human cancers. So the virus, when it was injected into the glioblastoma in the brains of these mice, grew out through the tumor tissue, stopped growing when it hit normal brain tissue, the tumors started to die, and when all the tumors were gone in the mice, the virus vanished because it no longer had cells that it could grow in. So we were able to basically cure 100% of those mice, and at the time of sacrifice, all of the glioblastoma was gone from them. So here in Arizona, we've just started a new collaboration on multiple myeloma with the myeloma experts at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale. One of the things we are exploring is can we add this virus to a bone marrow transplant and kill every last cancer cell in that patient's body at the time of transplant. Imagine a time when a virus, like the myxoma rabbit virus, could be the tool zeroed in on cancers like Andy Gordon's myeloma. Since I was diagnosed the first time, I have done more than 10 or 12 hundred mile bike rides and, and competing. I'm still working full time. You can have a full life. I mean, you know, I'm going to cry again. Uh, I've seen the birth of both of our grandchildren. I'm watching them grow up. Uh, uh, that's the stuff to look forward to and screw the cancer. <laughs>